I'm not a gullible person, but I've known many people in my life who have been conned or scammed out of money or possessions, and every time I've seen through the con, I've witnessed people believe stuff that in my opinion is obviously not true. For whatever reason, I don't fall for these cons. I think online or telephone scams are obviously scams. Call it intuition, call it smarts, whatever it is, I can see when people are trying to cheat me. It's a similar thing for danger. I can tell when a situation is dangerous. I think most people can. It's what keeps us alive. If an unleashed dog is walking my way, I treat it with caution. If a snake is crossing my path, I naturally feel a sense of danger. But when it comes to the pandemic, I just don't have that same feeling. If everyone around me was coughing and spluttering and keeling over, then yes, I would take the pandemic seriously. But the only thing I have to go by, and the only thing that most people have to go by, is the media. The media and the government are telling us that there is a pandemic. The media is telling us that people are coughing and spluttering and keeling over. Now, I'm not a denier of the virus, but equally, I'm not just going to be easily manipulated by the media. Just as I can see through an online scam, I can also see when the media are trying to fool me. To be fair to the media, they're probably not trying to fool us per se, but they are trying to play on our fears in order for people to click on their news stories. They've obviously found that it works. When people feel scared, they're more likely to click. For example, although almost nobody is dying in Australia from the pandemic, we are constantly bombarded with stories of people dying overseas. Luke Letlow, the 41-year-old congressman-elect who died from the virus, is being plastered all over the news. But yet, when I try to investigate how he died, the only thing I can find out is that the doctors were trying to perform a procedure on him, and that he died from a heart attack during said procedure. But most of the media aren't even reporting that. They're just saying that he died from virus-related complications. They don't want to say that he died from a procedure. They want to say that he died from the virus. It's obvious manipulation. Woman shares photo of blood-splattered hospital walls after her son died from the virus. I mean, come on, anybody who reads that headline would think that people are exploding when they catch the virus. And there are dozens of these sorts of stories of young people dying, and I'm not even doubting they happened, but it's still manipulation. They're cherry-picking data to make us feel scared, with the greater goal, I suppose, of making money. More clicks, more money, right? If they only reported 93-year-old Merrill dying from virus-related symptoms, well, that just wouldn't have the same effect, would it? I can understand why conspiracy theorists exist. Uh, they're seeing the same thing I'm seeing, media and government manipulation. They've just taken it to the next level and decided that the whole thing must be planned. But I think that's giving too much credit to the powers that be. The government can barely work out how to fix public transportation. How could they possibly have planned a global pandemic? Now, that's not to say that they're not taking advantage of the situation. Far from it, they probably are. But I'm not going to go into that here. If you believe the media, let's face it, most people do, then the US is completely overrun with the virus. Let's be realistic here. For most people, the only place they hear about the virus is through the media. Okay, so for most Australians, that's why they're scared. They've been told that if we don't take things seriously here, we'll end up like the US. But yet, during this supposed pandemic, doctors and nurses seem to have time to prepare and perform dance routines. Here are some health workers from the Boston Medical Center celebrating the arrival of the new vaccine in December. Okay, so it's not the best dance routine, but it still required choreography. If you believe the news headlines, then the hospitals in America are overrun with virus patients. But yet, these doctors and nurses at some point during their shift found a couple of hours, or more, to prepare and film this routine. Here's some nurses from the University of Utah Health performing a little number. Again, I'm not saying it's the best routine, but somebody had to have planned a meeting, sought permission from the hospital managers, got everyone together, choreographed the steps, practiced together, and then finally film it all and upload it to YouTube. What's happening with all the patients dying from the virus? It's funny, on their YouTube page right next to this nursing flash mob video, they have a video talking about the recent death statistics for the virus. But that only got 51 views. Doing dance routines gets almost 9,000 views. What do you think? If you were a doctor or a nurse in a hospital with patients dying every day from the virus, would you have the time or the inclination to choreograph a dance routine? I certainly wouldn't, and I would question its appropriateness. 